Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Game Pass Grab Bag, your weekly podcast reviewing games from the Game Pass collection, bringing you three unique perspectives from a varying skill range. I will be the Archbishop of this episode. Andrew, with me, our Apostle Keith. Apostate. Whatever. Our Apostate Keith. Hello. And of course, our minion, Liz. Hey, guys. This week was my pick, which was Sea Salt by YCJY Games. And to describe this game, I'm actually going to read the description that the actual game itself provides because this is what first sold me on the game. So Sea Salt is an action strategy hybrid in which you are an old god summoning unfathomable horrors to blight the human lands. You will have your sacrifice and humanity will pay for denying you what you are owed. Summoning a tide of minions, your armies will emerge from the sea to take vengeance on the religious figures who have dared to defy you and anyone else that stands in your way. When humanity prayed, you will... You were willing to offer them fair winds for their fishing vessels, and they enjoyed the riches and prosperity you provided. They knew the price, but cowardice overtook their faith when the time came to collect. The bishop of your church defied your will, and when the horrors of the deep emerged from the gloom, he will beg for the mercy of a swift death. So that right there is what sold me on the game. I was like, oh man, this sounds really interesting. And the fact that it's described as a strategy hybrid, I was like, yeah, this sounds really cool. But I think this actually might be my disappointment for the year. It's, is it going to be a pass for you? <laughs> it's an early front runner. So starting for me, I'm going to give this game a pass. It It's interesting and like it still may be worth your time. But overall, like there was moments of this game I did thoroughly enjoy. But overall, yeah, it was just disappointing. So I think I'm going to give it a pass. Yeah, I think I just said it, but it's a front runner for early disappointment of the year. I saw the same description. I don't even know if you had picked it when I had started playing it. And I actually was even a little excited when I started playing it. But this game fell into a pass for me. Yeah, that's three of us. <laughs> for me, I started out thinking the game was kind of boring. I couldn't really get into the gameplay. Then I started to like it. And then I was like, I need to stop. I can't play this game anymore. And so for me, there weren't enough highs in this game. Yeah, I, I, I will we'll get a little more into it. But I think this game could be salvageable with just a few patches. I, there's just a couple of things I have a lot of gripes with with this game. And I think with a couple patches, they could fix some of them. But to get into it, as like the description said, the story first set me up where I'm like, oh, this sounds really cool. Like I was kind of hoping like you would maybe have some choices in as to what you're doing. So you're basically playing this pagan god who lives in the sea and you are trying to get what you are owed. And I felt like the overall story wasn't fully fleshed out. At the beginning, it shows you talking to the Archbishop, it's saying like you want these specific people as your sacrifices. And of course, the last person you you say is the Archbishop himself, in which of course he refuses. So you decide to kill like everybody. And that's what I don't fully get. I don't get why you were punishing everybody because nobody knew that you want the Arch- Archbishop and he's just denying it. So I I didn't fully understand why I was murdering everyone, like women, children, babies, dogs, like, so I don't know. I thought the story was a little, wasn't fully fleshed out, but I thought it was still kind of interesting concept. I mean, you know me, I wasn't paying attention to a story, especially in a game like this. (laughs) I had a somewhat of an idea that was going on, but it quickly got real boring and I fell out of it. And yeah, the gameplay was all I was really focused on. Yeah, see, I was kind of mad about the story. I think it was the way that they did the dialogue that kind of threw me off of it. I did, however, think that the apostles and the creatures were really interesting. I thought that was way more interesting than the story. Yeah, but did you actually read the actual descriptions of them and stuff? No, just what they could do for me. See, I did, (laughs) and there wasn't much from it. I was kind of hoping that there'd be kind of a more interesting side story. Like, each apostle kind of has, like, as to why they're your apostle, but I didn't think their stories were that interesting. I felt like they were more like, oh, you took pity on this guy, now he's your apostle. And it's like, that doesn't seem... That seems weird. Like, these weren't, like, people that were, like, spreading the word of you or anything like that. No, you were just like, oh, you took pity on him and he's your apostle. But, Keith, I know how much you love my theories, so... Oh, (laughs) jeez. No, I don't think this game is about purgatory. But I was thinking, I think this game might take place in the same universe as Graveyard Keeper. Because the Archbishop speaks just like the people in Graveyard Keeper. And if you remember in Graveyard Keeper, you could never go to the major city because there was, as they said, an evil force there. 
and the city was along an ocean because you could see the ocean in Graveyard Keeper. So my theory is that this is the city that you weren't allowed to go to in Graveyard Keeper. I mean, that'd be pretty crazy if two separate developers that are unrelated to each other just kind of ripped each other's <laughs> idea off in I some mean, way. But sure. No, 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 they're not ripping each other's ideas off. They're they're just collaborating. Shh. Indie studios can collaborate. I think it'd be really cool. I like this theory. I mean, I like it in I like your theory in theory. <laughs> but <laughs> thank you. I'll take that. But no. I mean, it could be about purgatory too. Purgatory is you know? probably a better one. I mean, you do just do it over and over and over again. That's usually where purgatory comes up for you. So, yeah, usually. <laughs> but a kind of a quick synopsis of explaining how this game plays is: it is super simple. It is actually too simple that it wasn't very fun. There's literally two buttons you're using. You're using the right analog stick and the right trigger, and that is it. There's like you can use the left trigger for something, but I couldn't figure out what it was doing. It would turn my reticle blue, and I, I felt like it was try to have your guys come in closer. But there was no tutorial, and there's no controller options, so I couldn't see what the button was doing. So I just knew it turned my reticle blue, but I couldn't figure out what it was doing. But essentially, you're just moving a reticle around, and your minions are following your reticle. And then every time you hold right trigger, your minions attack whatever's in range of that reticle. And that's it. You can't coordinate what you want them to attack or what to prioritize. It's just, it's a crapshoot. And if you have a large group of minions, then they will get separated. Oh, I yes. mean, you can you can circle them around together, but like if you're trying to go around a corner, like they're not all going to go there. Yeah. And then, and then sometimes they appear off screen and you can't use them and then you have to restart the whole thing too. So, I mean. Yeah, there's a couple glitches with that. So, I don't necessarily know that I fully agree that you you can't control what they attack. It, it doesn't work well, but they do tend to, at least from what I noticed, try to focus on where your reticle is. So you can try to trap villagers and corners and stuff, but it's not easy. And it is mostly a crapshoot, but that's just because of the design. Yeah, the best way I can kind of describe this gameplay is, I'm, for people out there who may have know this game, it's it's once again kind of a smaller game, even though there was three sequels to it. But uh, Overlord. Overlord, once again, was another game. It was a third-person action game, but you played it an evil god in that one. But you actually had some minions. And the way you actually would send your minions out is by using like the control stick. And if the minions touched something they could attack, they would automatically attack. And that's essentially how this game kind of plays. You just use your stick to sweep your minions across an area and just have them kind of attack things. But unlike Overlord, Overlord, you actually control the character and could actually fight yourself and add in more depth to the gameplay. Plus, that game also had great dialogue. Anytime you select the minions, they always said their color is really funny. That was just a random tangent. There was one <laughs> level in particular. I remember half of my people would go right and the other would go like north. And I'm trying to get them all right. And the flesh guy would just keep bobbing around up and down. Oh, flesh. So, flesh yeah, flesh. he's this big blob that attacks really strong, but, like, he wasn't actually attacking anything. So, for me, I found it very difficult to try to get everybody to go in the same direction. Because I feel like they would always split off for me. Yeah, I think this game just had a lot of glitches to it. And they weren't always even just full-blown glitches. Some very much were. But a lot of it was just didn't work the way it was supposed to type of glitches. But you could usually get through it, I guess. Character mapping in this game is awful. If you tell your people to go, oh, go to this alley, some people will go like the longest way around the building and end up attracting enemies or just getting killed off by something. Like they just never properly followed paths properly. And then, so the idea of this game is you're getting these summoner points and whenever you get to a summoner point, you can pick out of various cards. You unlock more cards, which are more minions, and you would essentially play this card and summon that particular minion. And they range from support, utility, ranged, melee, you name it. There's a ton of minions, which is one of the good things about this game. I really like the variety of the minions. But the thing that stinks about it is all of them have such different range, different abilities, and stuff like that, that it just ends up being this huge mess of, of minions that just do whatever they want. And everyone just ends up spreading everywhere and just kind of dying. I felt like I was having a harder time when I had a bigger group. I would have to have special combos. Like there was my tried and true, and then sometimes I would, you know, mix things up a little bit, but it never worked out. So I just had a certain set that I would always use. Yeah, I, I would too, but 
And that's the unfortunate thing. There was so many minions, but it's just like a lot of them I wouldn't even touch because it's like, yeah, you're good, but if I use you, you're just going to run off and die, and I don't want to waste it. Yeah, I think I used like the worms at the very beginning because I had to. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. never used them. Uh, see, I, I actually like the worms. I would filter them in every now and then. They were a bit tanky, and one of the few apostates that stayed good was the first one, actually, and it made the worms stronger, so... I actually would cycle them in depending on what I was up against. See, I, I like I said, I think there was some strategy to it. I think it was there. It just wasn't there well. And that's what drove me so nuts about this game is that it could have been so much better. And maybe it can be, but I, I just, that's where it fell flat for me. No, I agree. There definitely is strategy. Like, like me and Liz were saying, like we have a core that we always went with. Like I always had the cultist and I had the lich and eventually the shamans that could heal my people. Those were the only three characters I'd basically use. Sometimes I'd have the creature in there. Sometimes I'd have the flesh in there. But that was always just at least my group was the Lich, Shaman, and Cultist. And it's because they were ranged. They could stay away from people. And they could self-sustain and heal each other. So, like, that was it. And so that's, like, the whole idea of the strategy. is like you got to find your group that works well with you. Yeah, I had no luck with yours. Because I, I actually tried it, the Cultist and the Lich. And I did not like that for me. I did the Cultist... The crab, and then sometimes I would add, like, the fishman or the flesh, and that worked for me. I love the crabs. See, I used the I used the crabs a little bit until I... You got crabs. Got, yeah. I used the crabs <laughs> until, I, until I got the fishmen, is what I was trying to say. And I just... The crabs from there weren't that good, because they were just really, really weak, whereas at least the fishmen had a little bit of balance to them. But... Yeah, I, I usually went with some sort of combo of melee and range. I liked a little bit of both. Well, for me, like, the crabs were great because they were fire resistant. So I would use them in levels with, like, that flamethrower guy. Wait, so I'm, a, I'm confused, though. Wait, do you keep saying apostates? Yeah. I thought it was apostles. I'm confused. Is it the same thing? I think it's basically, I think it's basically the same thing. I think it's just almost a different term for it. Oh, no, it's choose your apostle. Dang, I just threw an apostate for no reason. Yeah, man. Liz has been correcting you. Yeah, when you start the game. Well, dang, I stand corrected. I'm a dum-dum. But do you also think it was a missed opportunity that they were called fishmen and not seamen? Or mermans? Merman may have been better. Not seamen? You wouldn't go with seamen? No. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> but thanks for trying. This is a mature podcast. <laughs> I think it would've been, I, I would have enjoyed this game if it had a little more humor. I was expecting a little bit of humor from it. But this game is just generally very dark. Yeah, but it did it did feel weird. Yeah, now that you pointed out that with the uh, the voice acting as it was being the from that game that I won't mention is <laughs> with the best music ever. Yeah, I know which one you're talking about. So you know, considering it had that element to it, and it had the pixel graphics, and it kind of I don't know, it, it just had an opportunity to throw in some humor, and it felt. It didn't have it. I felt like at some points they were trying to go with humor because one of the apostles stated how he was like he he lived by a seaside cliff and he thought the seagulls were giving him presents by pooping on him. So he enjoyed collecting their poop. Like that was his story. And it's like, I don't get why he's an apostle, but OK. And it, it like that seemed kind of humorous, like even his pictures, him covered in bird poop. And it's like, oh, OK. So I thought they were maybe trying to go for some humorous elements to this game, but no, they didn't. Well, were they trying to be humorous when they made you kill babies? That's why That's why I don't think Same so. Same with killing dogs. It's like, I don't really understand why that's there, I guess. Yes, I guess we can also say, we can confirm, you cannot pet the dog no, in this game. No, no petting. You actually on, you, you only kill dogs, which is unfortunate. But the dogs were the worst. <sighs> oh, were one of the worst enemies. They would take on my entire group in one bite. Yeah, Trick was just waiting for him to charge before you got in there, but then you had to be quick, and that was hard to but do. But you were evil, so it's like, go mm -hmm. dogs. I also wanted to ask you guys, what was your favorite apostle? Because there were some that I really hated. I personally really liked the one with the cultists, which is Saint Traiton, don't know how to pronounce it. The one with the spitters and worms, Ivan Durovich VIII, and Solaris with the fishmen. But I absolutely hated the one with the madman, which was the Moros Momos, or whoever it was. There were some that I just, like, hated. The Ivan Durovich one, though, that one was kind of hard because sometimes you... Well, not sometimes. 
all the time you would be able to choose from three different minions and sometimes it would have the cheat cards available but sometimes none of the minions would work for me so it was really a gamble with that one but those were the three that i liked it, the only one i liked was the one that started with the cultist because since i always played with cultist he was to me the best because you also got the ability where you could sacrifice the cultist and you'd get one of three random like super minions and those things were incredible one of them really sucked though I think it was, like, the white one with the sword. He didn't really work well for me. Oh, even, like, he was probably, he wasn't the greatest, but he still worked well, especially if you could heal him. And so, for me, he was always the best option. Because as Liz was subscribing with some of the other apostles, their abilities are just random. And, like, that's, like, kind of my issue with this game. It's, like, it's supposed to be a strategy game, but by picking those guys, you're kind of just making a game that's kind of a crapshoot, even more of a crapshoot. Yeah, Because it's like, oh, you only get to pick one of three cards. So you could be in the middle of a boss fight and you're like, oh, I really hope I can do uh, the cultist. And it's like, nope, you get worms. <laughs> worms. <laughs> yeah, I only honestly used, I think, two of them. I tried the, whatever that guy's name is. I don't remember what you said. Uh, treasure guy. And I didn't like him, so I never went back to him. But I only used the first one and the cultist because... As soon as I got the cultist, that's when I switched to the cultist and I didn't use any of the other ones. Because it just yeah, was basically the best one at all times. You didn't try them all, Andrew? No, I did. I didn't even unlock I, I, them all. They were just inconsistent. Yeah, see, I didn't even unlock them all because I, I, I think it took me until somewhere near about the, the second to last map before I got the, the one that unlocked for 50,000 gold. I just was not able to collect gold in this game apparently so i don't know if that's one of the reasons i had just such a boring time with it because i couldn't even build swarms but yeah i just that was one of my biggest complaints about the game quite honestly because it made the game just so boring but the cultists then were just a ton of fun so i don't know yeah collecting gold in this game to me was felt very inconsistent because only a handful of people kind of dropped gold and you, never knew if who. you killed civilians it, it, well it was civilians and hunters but, like, you would have, like, guards and stuff that were difficult to kill, and you'd be like, oh, this guy surely will drop me gold. Nope. And when you collect a certain amount of gold, you're able to summon, a, like, another group of minions. Instead of finding a summoning portal, you can actually do it that way by collecting gold. And, like, that was another element of this game that I felt, like, was just really kind of random. So at the beginning of this episode, I also talked about how I feel like this game could be fixed with a couple patches. The first thing that I think really needs to be fixed in this game are checkpoints. Every time you complete a room, you bring the group of minions that you have into the next room. And if you die in that room, you just restart that room. So you have the exact same minions that you had at the beginning of it. And you basically can try again. But since this game doesn't really have any strategy, there's sometimes you could start a room and you are just completely screwed. You are you only will have like three cultists and you're going against a bunch of hunters. And it's like there's absolutely no way you can beat it. And since there's no real, like, checkpoint system in this game, you just have to start the entire level over again. And some of these levels are way too long. I would yeah. just run to a spawning point, And if I couldn't find one before I died, I would just keep trying different paths. <laughs> that was my go-to. Nice. But, like, you, you were just you had very limited options. Like, I always like to think of, like, a good game as, like, oh, I may only have one health, but if I can keep retrying this boss, eventually I can beat him, even only having one health. That is physically impossible in this game. In this game, it's, like... If you just don't have the right minion combination, you will never be able to beat this room. You have to start all over again. Yeah, I had to do that with the last boss quite a few times. Is Basically, I think I actually just died enough to him until I got the cultist, who I still hadn't gotten at that point somehow either. But until I got him, and then I got the cultist apostle, and from there it was super easy. And I destroyed him the first try. The second thing I think that really needs to be fixed in this game, that can be fixed in a patch is there needs to be a level select. I have beaten this game three times because I'm trying to find some of the cards and then I come to find out to unlock one of the hidden apostles, you have to beat the game, wait through the entire credits, and then at the end of the credits, you have to wait a few minutes and eventually a ship arrives and you get to play as a hunter. But I didn't realize that after my second playthrough and I'm like, crap, I literally have to play through this entire game again just to get that last apostle to get the achievement, which I still ended up not being able to do because I got so frustrated with the game. So this game needs to have a level select. Oh, and on that point, going back to your point of checkpoints, and I get it more at this point. I'm not going to complain about it as much, but you had told me about that when I beat the game the first time, or the only time, actually. But when I beat the game, I waited through, and I got the hunter. Didn't really pay much attention to my health at first, because he does a ton of damage, or she. They don't really tell you, but they don't do they do 
or they dole out a ton of damage, kill everything with ease, but you can still take damage pretty easily. And I just got to a point where after about five tries, I still couldn't do it, and I just gave up. I just kept dying every time. Do you even play as the last apostle? You unlock it at the end, right? I, I believe so. I, I mean, like I said, I wasn't able to actually unlock the guy, which really infuriated me because I got so frustrated with the game. But from what I see, you actually unlock the apostle, and then you can play any level as just like the hunter. Oh, but like the game ends and you just have to go back to playing more? Yeah, you can you can run through the game again as a hunter. And so, yeah, I never unlocked him because I ended up skipping the post credit scene and therefore never got him. I still didn't unlock him, but I played as a hunter and it was kind of fun. I also wanted to ask you guys if you played the arenas. I believe, I believe that if you beat 30 levels, that's when you unlock one of the apostles. Yeah. That's how I unlocked one of them. And that's the only reason why I kept playing the arenas. Same I mean, they were, they were pretty fun, but it is just the same thing over, over, over again. Yeah, I played them, but again, like most things, in, it, it just didn't have a lot of appeal after a few tries. Like, I think that's basically what you were saying, too, is I just kept losing, and there wasn't a lot of ways I saw that I could have done much differently. So I just stopped, and it wasn't that fun. I only played the arena where you have to kill 15 waves of enemies. And for me, I kept getting to like, I forget if it was like 12 or 13 and I would die. And then I was just like, I'm done. I'm getting my 30 and unlocking the apostle and then I'm done. That's what happened to me. I mean, I beat the first one of beating the first 15 waves. Then I played a little bit of the other ones and I was just like, yeah, I really don't care. Once I got the 30 levels completed and got that apostle, I was like, all right, I think I'm good. There's one level that is absolutely atrocious and Andrew ended up finishing it for me because I was like, Andrew, I don't think I can play this game anymore. He's like, no, no, let me do this this part for you. And then he's like, oh, wait, I forgot that this room was really terrible too. And then he ended up just like beating the level for me. I got you to the final boss. Or I got you to the boss. I was like, all right, Liz, you could beat the boss. And then you still were like, no, I'm going to be done with this game. So but I was like, I had right, the, I'll beat the boss. I had the apostle that you had to pick between three cards and that just, it was so frustrating with the boss. Yeah. And, and that's what I mean. Like, I couldn't, you obviously that's couldn't why he's such an awful apostles. apostle. Yeah. Which we talked earlier about Graveyard Keeper, and I kind of thought that, I mean, the graphics weren't the same, but I do love games that are super, like, dark and gloomy like this. Like, I like the art style of it a lot, but I am a little bit sick of kind of, like, the pixelated games. I feel like we've played too many of them lately, to be honest. I will say, though, I'm kind of glad this game was pixelated. Because if it wasn't, this game is super violent. So it would probably be a little rough if it wasn't pixelated. Yeah, you beat a boss and like an octopus rips the body apart. Yeah. Like, it's pretty nasty. Every time you defeat a boss, yeah, tentacles grab the boss from each limb and literally pull them apart. Even too, when you're killing people, they're like exploding and like blood's all over the ground. They're begging you not to kill them. It's pretty... Yeah, it's pretty dark. So if this game wasn't pixelated, I think it would be a little rough to watch sometimes. But did you think that the minions in the Apostles looked different enough? Oh, so that was my biggest complaint about it, was honestly that for pixelated graphics, it was so blurry that everything just felt the same, aside from basically the minions. But all the enemies, there were some different models, but I lost track of them so quickly because they all were kind of same, same, but different. Yeah. That's like our new favorite saying. I love same, same, but different. I hated the guy with the axe. It would fall and if you were anywhere near it. If you had a large swarm too and any of them were near the axe, you would die. So there were some enemies that I just remembered because I hated them. But besides that, I'm more meant like I'm visualizing the cards when you choose which minion you're going to get. They have like the picture on the cards. Yeah, oh, yeah. Tarot cards. Those designs exactly, were really yeah. cool. I thought those were cool. I agree. I love those. Yeah, I like the atmosphere they kind of build with this game. I really liked, yeah, the tarot cards. The Apostles pictures look like kind of like there would be pictures of a stained glass window. I, I liked the design of it. But I think yeah, did a little bit more with it. Yeah, when it came to the actual gameplay, like Keith is saying, some of the field is just covered in blood and bits, and it would be super easy to lose the sight of enemies too. But once again, you're not really aiming. You're just holding right trigger. So it's like, well, my minions can see them, so they're rubbing against something over there, so I think there's an enemy over there. And it would be easy just to kind of lose sight of some things. Or the lich I always thought was an enemy. So I kept Which I don't know why. He was like, a why skeleton are they attacking dude. Him? I don't know. <laughs> he just looked like everybody else. He was basic. Two things about about that. One, quick question. Did you pretty much hold right trigger all the time? 
I mean, a good amount. That's literally the only button you use, so yeah. See, I, I feel like I used it a lot less because, again, I would try to get closer to enemies. I don't know. I I wasn't just holding it all the time, and maybe you're you're just exaggerating. Well, I, it's possible. No, I mean, it's because of my group. I was ranged, so I always took my time. I literally kind of clear out every barricade because I wouldn't want my enemies to ever focus the barricades when they would come up to real enemies. So I would essentially just take my time and just wipe everything out. So I would hold right trigger lock because I did a lot of range people. I suppose I suppose that's fair. I forgot my point. What, Liz, what, what did you say? <laughs> you said something in response to Andrew. Well, I guess that point's not important. <laughs> you said something else and I had a thought about it, but it probably wasn't that important. You can just keep this right in here. I don't know what I'm talking about. Someone's going to hear um, this as a thought and be like, what did Keith have to say about it? You'll never know. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. I remember I remember why. So I don't blame you, Liz, because I thought the Lich looked like a person all the time, too. It was one of the only characters that didn't look very monster-like. So he was I, a skeleton. How were you guys not seeing him? He looked like a dude. I mean, he was a skeleton dude. If you, yeah, sure, it had like a gray face, but in rib cage and bony legs and a staff. Okay, I just oh. saw a person in like a black outfit dressed like every I'm, other person running across the screen. Liz, I'm with you on this one. We're posting a screenshot. <laughs> vote, vote team Keith and Liz. <laughs> you guys are wrong. But anyway, I so the graphics, like, once again, this is just another pixel game. I I think they could have done a little bit better with some of the character models, but I thought it was okay with it. To me, though, I, I, I like that you're kind of playing an evil god in this game, because this type of game, like, really is just... There's very few games that really just let you play, like, a genuinely evil being. Like, I thought this game would maybe have you... Maybe have some sort of some sort of paragon system where you can maybe be merciful or something like that. Cause also too, when I was reading this description of the game, I was like, Oh, maybe this game might have some elements from black and white and you can like get some worshipers and stuff like that. I thought you would be like building minions and sending them off. And like, you would actually have like a base or something like that and can maybe control your minions in the field, but it wasn't like that. So it's like, ah, it's did describe really it as a real time strategy. And I totally forgot about black and white and that game was awesome. And they need to bring it back. I know. I'm well. Lionhead Studios no longer exists. Stephen Molyneux still exists, although he might be yeah, insane now. But <laughs> you know, if you're out there, and I'm sorry that I called you insane, make black and white <laughs> too, please. He goes by the term dream. I'm sure he okay? listens to us. But yeah, so like, I was kind of hoping for like maybe a little bit of like merciful system, but there wasn't. You literally just were murdering everyone. Because, like, there's a couple times where I felt bad that I was murdering people. Like, all right, ever since we've had a baby, I always feel bad. Like, like I felt bad murdering the babies in this game. I did not want to murder the babies. But it's, unless you purposely walk around them because your minions will just step on it and kill it. Which was Why are they there? There was, oh, like, a sicko working on this game. Same with dogs. Like, I, don't, I just don't get that. The, the dogs, I kind of understand, because it's medieval times, and, like, they actually use dogs in the military and stuff like that. But you but... know the people who like video games like dogs. I mean, they have that whole Twitter thing. Does the game pet the dog? Like, I mean, come on. But, the, yeah. but that's if there's an opportunity to pet the dog. I mean, there's no opportunity. The I... dogs are enemies in this. I, I didn't even notice the babies, but that's, again, because everything is just a jumbled mess of 8-bit on this game. And I don't even know if it's 8-bit, quite frankly. But I, yeah, I didn't even notice the babies. And the dogs, I just went, Ugh, this is an annoying enemy I have to fight. But yeah, I mean, like, there was a couple times, too, like, you know, when people are asking for mercy, like, everyone is, like, sacrificing to you, praying to you that you see mercy. I just, you just wanted to kill the archbishop. Like, even when you get to the archbishop, like, the entire town's outside of the church. And, like, you have no other option but to murder everybody. And there was times where I'm like, I want to see if I can just walk by everyone and just try to get to the church. But it wouldn't let me. I literally had to just murder everyone. And it's like, well, these people didn't do anything wrong. Like, why am I killing them? So going on a long tangent, I'm glad this game wasn't too detailed because that is a lot of murdering you do in this game. Yeah, it'd probably be a little aggressive. But but maybe like 16-bit graphics next time. Give me a little more context. Yeah. But speaking of murdering, I'm going to glaze over the music because the music in this game is awful. But did you see there's an achievement to murder the developers? No, I didn't. Maybe they knew they didn't put out a good game. <laughs> I'm 
now. There's actually one level where there's uh, a secret area where you actually have to have the enemies shoot the wall open. And then I actually move the camera and you see them playing like instruments. And yeah, you get an achievement for finding the developers and murdering the two developers of this game. Huh. Well, I should throw out as a disclaimer, I don't in- encourage in any way murder. So don't actually murder them in real life. Just just yes. making oh, sure I'm very true. clear about that. It's that, 2020, guys. I, I mean, <laughs> you gotta be careful. You, you gotta be clear. I, I think this saying. is like 1975. I'd, I'd be very clear. Just don't murder people. That's not cool. But yeah, the, the game's not very good. So huh. just making just making yeah. sure I'm clear on that. Because even the achievements too weren't great. So I would overall probably not recommend this game to achievement hunters. So this game is relatively short. You have to basically beat it twice. The first time you play it, it's on normal mode. Once you beat it, you unlock hard mode, which honestly I didn't think was that much harder. Once I, I stuck with my same group of cultists and the lich, like even in hard mode, I didn't think it was that difficult. But beating the entire game twice, I think I ended at like 450. And then as I said, there's no level select in this game. So if you're missing a card or if you're missing the end game apostle, you basically have to play this entire game over again. There's one achievement where you have to beat all the levels, and I'm only at like 40% on that, and I've played this game like three times, and it's like, what levels am I missing? Is it talking about the arena? Like, a lot of the achievements were just unclear, and I'm pretty sure a good amount of achievements also weren't working. That may be possible. I don't know for sure. I didn't have a lot. I only had 325 total. Liz had 150, and you had 525, so... yeah. Because I beat the game twice. Yeah, so you got you got over half the points of it. Yeah. I do like that beating the game gives you 200, though. So at least you get a good chunk of points just for getting through it. And I think it's pretty easy to get through. Yeah. It's just if you have the patience for it. They should have put some fun ones in. They should have put some fun ones in, though. I like looking at them and seeing which ones I can aim for. I felt these ones were all boring. Yeah. I mean, a good amount of them are secret achievements, which, once again, I absolutely hate when a game does that. Because there was no reason for the achievements that are secret achievements to be secret. A lot of them are generally killing a boss, which you really don't need that to be a secret. Like, I know I'm going to kill this boss. And then, like, one of the achievements was to kill the developers. It's just like, that doesn't need to be secret. So, another complaint about this game. (sighs) So, after our long ramblings, getting into our final thoughts here. Since this, unfortunately, was my pick. I will say, I did have moments of fun in this game. When things are going your way, your minions are working... And it's really cool to see the giant list of minions and kind of playing with some of them. But 90% of them aren't worth your time. This game just got like really frustrating with me sometimes. Especially to, like I said, there's no good checkpoint system. There was one time I actually, I got to the boss. I was at the end of a level and my game ended up closing out and I had to completely restart the level. That's when I finally said I'm done with this game. That's when I actually stopped playing this game. And it stinks too because it was like, the final level too, or no, the level before the final level. So like I was trying to get the last two achievements I missed and it's like, nope, I do not have the patience for this game. This game just really irritates me. So overall, I think I'm giving it a 60. It, it's still relatively worth your time if you, cause it's a unique game. It does something different and it's something you could really kind of turn your brain off to play. Cause it's literally just two buttons of the right, right stick and the right trigger. And that's it. So if you're looking for something unique, I'd say maybe check this game out because even too, I don't even think it's a gig big to download. So it's super quick, but yeah, overall it's just really frustrating. And I think it was probably my disappointment for the year. I think you said a lot of what I had to say aside from having my game just close out on me. I, I didn't have that happen to me, but I had really high hopes going into this game and this is going to be, someone can check me on this. I don't know, but I think this is one of the few games even as a pass, I just don't know if it's really worth much of your time. If you're really into some sort of strategy type of game, like I, I'd like someone to give me a reason to like it. I just I haven't found a lot of reasons. I'd give it a shot if they patched it and said they added in a bunch of stuff for sure because I think there's really something there. That's the best thing I'll say about it. And I think I got to agree with you and give it a 60. I was actually going to give it a 60 as well, but I think I'm going to knock off a few points. 
Let me give it a 57. Because the more we talk about it, the more I'm just like, I just never want to play this game again. <laughs> I thought for sure you would have knocked off more points because you killed dogs in it. I mean, that's also part of it. Honestly, most of the points I'm giving for the art style and things like that. I just, I don't want to play it. I didn't want to play it. I was forced to. It was my homework. Ugh. <laughs> Andrew beat a level for me. Uh, but looking at Metacritic, it's still TBD on a lot of the platforms. Xbox is TBD. Um, they did have some of the they did have some of the reviews for users and critics up though, and they're all over the place. I mean, critics anywhere from sixty to eighty, and then and then users. I mean, that was just all over the place. Someone actually created an account with Metacritic just to give this game a low score because they hated it that much. One thing that I thought was interesting is that a couple people actually said that the enemy with a shotgun ruined the game for them. And a lot of people said that the gameplay was far too simplistic. So those were the kind of the main concerns. Yeah, which is very similar. I mean, what we were saying with this too, the shotgun enemy was awful. Yeah. Oh, I hated the shotgun enemy. There was nothing you could do to really kind of counter him. The it, you either the... had enough guys to kill him or you didn't. The look of the shotgun guy kind of reminded me of Enter the Gungeon. Yeah. Oh, that... And the way he rolled, too? Yeah. Oh, well, maybe this game takes place in the same universe as Enter the Gungeon. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Are all pixelated... You just gave me a dude. <laughs> are all pixelated games in the same universe? Did we just discover something? Oof. Are all games in purgatory? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you're just mocking me. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> Thank you all so much for listening. Uh, we really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you want to contact us and if you want to recommend a game to us, it's it's been a while since we've had a recommendation. So if there's any games you want to recommend, you can reach us at GamePassGrabBag at gmail.com. We are also on Facebook at GamePassGrabBag. And we're also on Twitter at GPGBPod. And we are also have an Xbox Live Club at GPGBPals. I have been your hardcore gamer host, Andrew. You can follow me on Xbox Live at Firebird01952. I am also on Mixer with that same name. And I will be streaming some of the games we're playing, so come on by and say hi. And I'm Keith. Uh, you can get me on Xbox on Little Fluffy is my name there. I don't stream a lot, but I do take a lot of clips. So you can follow me and look at my dumb clips, which are usually just of me dying a lot of times. So usually. Oh, but they're very comical on how you die. Oh, for sure. That's Yeah, for sure. So if you want to watch me <laughs> die in really dumb ways... You know where to find me now. And I'm Liz the Noob, gamertag come on, I'm Dean, and I'm on Twitter at Liz the Noob, Noob is EW. I also wanted to say that for my next pick, I have that sorted, but for the pick after that, I'm going to be doing a poll on Twitter and Facebook. So follow us on one of those, and you guys can either vote for one of the picks that I'm suggesting, or you can comment and put your own. And if it gets enough likes, then we'll pick that one. Alrighty, everyone. That's going to do it for us. And thank you so much for listening. Greatly appreciate you guys. Please come join us again next week. Bye, guys. See you.